Hey, sister. So today, I just want to have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Is that okay? All right. Well, as you can see from the title of this podcast episode, it's called, Am I a Bad Christian? <laughs> of course not, sister. I mean, automatically, I'm going to tell you right now, if you've been here long enough in my podcast, you will know how much I talk about being cautious to be aware, be aware and cautious of the enemy's lies. The enemy is Satan and he is the father of guilt. And so unless you are deliberately sinning on purpose and in constant like unrepentance, if you are unrepentant of a sin, that's a different, like we have scriptures for that. There's a, a whole other calling for that. But my sister, when it comes to your Bible study, when it comes to spending time with God, and you know, we, we live in a, in a time where it's not happening as much as it used to. I think there was more of a quiet time culture, quote, quote unquote, a uh, few years back, maybe even before. And nowadays, when you look at the statistics, uh, one of my earlier episodes, I was reading some of the statistics about how much, how much, how little people re actually read their Bibles, much less even a few times a week. Um, it is staggering, right? The, it's, it's amazing. Like it's, it's actually kind of appalling, but it doesn't mean, okay, so I want you to, I want you to hear me out here. It does not mean because you do not do Bible study a certain way or at a certain time or in a certain consistent, um, I guess, uh, schedule that you are a bad Christian. And that, and that's what I'm going to talk about because, you know, I know for me, I am perfectionist that's my personality like I am not the like super neat like super I'm, I'm getting much better at that by the way but I am like more like cluttered and I'm decluttering my life and I've been doing that for the last year and it's been amazing but that has been a big struggle that is not what I'm talking about I'm the perfectionist that expects very much of myself and I'm also I've got these people pleasing tendencies so I want to look good and I don't even like it's not like I say it out loud to myself but that is my personality. Like it is not what I was born with necessarily, but it was something that kind of got ingrained in me as I grew up through childhood experiences and situations. And so a lot of us can relate. And so I'm, I'm just here to tell you that it's not that, like it's not that I, like I, I struggle like you do. Let's just put it this way. I struggle very much to be, um, I guess consistent in the way I study the Bible. I definitely will tell you disclaimer. Like I, I do have the word of God in some degree every day. Of course, I'm going to tell you right now, the last week or so, I think it was two weeks ago. I had, I had missed a day completely. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I completely missed a day. And it was like a, like, it's just, it's a day that started off kind of crazy. And I start, I'm, I'm going to admit, I started feeling bad. Like, Oh my gosh, I missed a quiet time. I missed a day. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's, I'm not here to be legalistic. I had to remind myself. But I also know that there are some of you guys who, or maybe even a lot of you, is probably why you're tuning in on the podcast, is that you're like, I don't really have a routine right now. And I kind of feel really bad because of it. Like, does God really look at me as like someone who is a bad daughter, a bad Christian, because I don't do my Bible study a certain way or do it even every day? But you still have a love for God. You still live a life like of a, of a disciple of Jesus, of a Christian. Like you are trying to be righteous. You are living a repentant life. Um, you're choosing, you know, you're choosing what God would choose, you know, most of the time. And I know we have temptations and I know we have sins, but you're not like deliberately in sin where you're constantly in an in, in unrepentant sin. I'm telling you right now, sister, you are not a bad Christian, okay? I'm talking especially to my guilty souls out there who's just like me. We struggle with that. Like if we, let's say, like I know for me, I'm involved with a lot of things like in church ministry. And if I say no to something in ministry, I can tend to feel guilty sometimes. And I have to like, especially lately, have been learning like, no, no. I, I got to look, God wants me to take care of my temple too. Like I got to take care of my children. I got to take care of my family. Like if there is something that is interfering, I got to figure, well, you know what? This might need to be delegated. This might need to be go to someone else. And you know what? Why not give that other person the opportunity to do that thing? So why am I feeling guilty about saying no? I'm not a bad Christian because I say no, because I choose number one, to have peace in my life and have enough sleep so that I can wake up in the mornings 
and I can have energy to study my Bible um, or to at least listen to it if I can't sit down and actually write notes because that has been like my last couple of weeks that has just been the case for me for the most part. It has this is a busy season of my life, so that's what I have chosen to do. And so for me, that's what is working right now. But I'm going to tell you right now, like you, you don't need to be listening to the enemy's lies and telling you you're a bad Christian because you don't do this a certain way like this other Christian does or that other Christian does. You might have a tendency to compare yourself with someone else. That's another thing like I'm going to bring up another topic because it's not a topic, but it's part of this conversation because we can compare ourselves to other Christians who might be doing more for God or more for the kingdom than we are because in this season of our lives, we we find ourselves limited. I'm going to tell you, I remember when I was a single mom, I lived as a single mom for like 10 years and seven of those years I was faithful to God because if you know my story, I was away from God and I, I step, had stepped away from my faith for four years and two of those years um, I was married and then two of those years I was living as a single mom and then of course, therefore I I lived eight more years, but anyway, those eight years that I was as a single mom, I, I came back to God and I was faithful, stronger than ever. I remember just having limitations, but I would use the resources I had and my love and fire for God for the ministry as much as I could to my ability. I was also trying to complete my program, my master's program in two of those years. So I had to say no to more things. I couldn't attend certain events and you might relate to this, right? You might be in a season where you're in school or or whatever the case, you're just, um, you've got more responsibilities. I had to say no to certain things on Sundays. Like I went to church that, that was a, a non-compromising for me, for sure. There are certain things that you do not compromise for sure. Like, uh, worshiping the Lord, right? Weekly and, and in your Sunday, or some of you that are listening, you celebrate on Saturdays. That's cool. You know, your Sabbath or, or Sunday, but you might be celebrating, you're, you're worshiping God, right? You take that day out of the week to worship God. I don't compromise that. I go, unless I'm sick, obviously, or one of my kids are sick. That's a different story. But, you know, obviously exceptions to the rule, right? But there are certain things that I do not miss. And even in that time, I didn't. But like, there are certain things that I had to say no to. And I had to do a little bit less of. And was did that make me a bad Christian? Of course not. I love God just as much as I loved him right before I started my master's, just as much as I loved him when I first became a mom, before I was a mom, after my son graduated high school and started college and we had to start figuring out, you know, how to, you know, a whole new, a whole new way of life. And, and my son got into high school, all these changes in my life, having a daughter, all these changes brought about new challenges. And of course, being a new mom, that's another thing. Like I had to adjust my quiet times. I couldn't even have them every single day, but most days I did almost every day because I, I eventually found a way to do it every day that worked in a, like five minutes and I still got to be in the word of God. And, and I share that with you as well in another episode, because I have a lot of tips and tricks that I've learned in my life to help you get connected with God every day without, you know, having a 30 minute Bible study or, or one hour Bible study every day. Now, if you could do that, awesome. But if you can't, there's always a way to connect with God. And this is why I'm here. Like, I'm here to help you with that. If you need more help with that, you know you can reach out to me. Simply go to the intentionalchristianwoman.com. Book a call with me today. It's free. It's 10 minutes long. We talk about how I can help you. I, I actually want to guide you in the direction that in the things that you want. So I do have a coaching program, but I am, but it's flexible. So I want to meet your needs. And the thing is that what I want to do more than anything is I want to help you to connect with God every day because you deserve my sister as a daughter of the King to have that peace in your life. And the best way that I've found in so many that I speak, so many sisters that I've talked to and I've, I've, I've asked them, I've done a lot of market research on this, just trying to find out like, what do you need? What do you need? They want peace in their lives. And when they have their time with God, just like I do, there's there's a sense of starting off the day just so calm because you've connected with the Lord. So I have ways you can do that. Now, is everything going to be perfect? No, of course not. And that's why I'm here talking about this topic because you do not need to go around feeling like you're a bad Christian because you didn't have your quiet time today. Okay. That just doesn't, that's not, you know, or if you're going through a season where you're going through maybe a time of, of sadness or or you're not as inspired, you're not as motivated. Uh, maybe even you're you're having some doubts, you know, you're questioning things. Listen, it's not bad to question things. Just go to the word of God. The answer is always there, but it is not bad to do all these. These are stages we go through. It's part of our growth. It does not mean we are a bad Christian. So it's just a conversation I'm having with you. Now, of course, I want to 
I want to problem solve. That's my personality. Like I want to problem solve. Let's that I love that. Now there's a time and place, right? I problem solve. Sometimes you just have to listen. I've learned that, but I love to help people solve problems. I'm a teacher. I teach the kids how to solve pro- solve problems, not math, but like in you know critical thinking, and I love to do that myself. And so. I've, I've been working on creating some things and recently I created a 30 day devotional is from Psalm 119 and it's called love for his word. And what I did is I made this 30 day devotional to be a transformation of your mindset and your heart to really understanding the importance and really gaining a conviction about the importance of being in God's word. Again, there's different ways of doing that, right? Like one size does not fit all. But the 30-day devotional that I created is meant to transform you, to transform your mind. And whether you're a brand new Christian or a Christian that has been around for a while but just needs a refresher or is unmotivated and kind of needs to go back to the basics or maybe you've just never learned why you need to study your Bible, right? And so I created this to be a transformation and I launched it last month in December I I wanted to remind you that it's still there, but here's the thing. I actually decided to make a little special, a flash sale. (laughs) It's not that flash because I actually have it for the month of February. So, you know, I love February because the month of love, right? You know, everybody's, oh, Valentine's Day. And whether you celebrate it or not, it's fine. But, you know, when you think of February, it's, it's the month of love, right? So that's what I think about anyway. So I was like, why not share the love, right? And share my love for his word, 30 day devotional with all my listeners, right? And my Facebook community. So if you're not on there, sister, get on there quickly or my email is. So Facebook community, you can join by going to bit.ly forward slash let's be intentional. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash let's be intentional. You'll join my community. It's an amazing group of women. We, I love everyone, everyone there. And also my email list, if you want to get my uh, monthly newsletter, just go to the intentional Christian woman.com. You'll see on the little sidebar, uh, grab your free gift. You get a little free gift from me, a little gift from me to you, and then you get signed up. And on there, I also have um, announced that for this week. So you guys get like first dibs <laughs> on my announcements. But going back to what I was saying, so if you're like interested in, in taking advantage of that flash sale, which happens in the month of February, simply go to the intentional Christian woman.com forward slash love for his word. That's the intentional Christian woman.com forward slash love for his word. That is the title of my devotional. Get that transformation, get convictions, get reignited for your passion, for the love of God, for the love of God's word. And I think it's going to be amazing. And I I wanted to actually read to you a testimonial from one of my beautiful sisters in my community. Her name is Tasha Brown. Thank you so much, Tasha. And her testimonial about this devotional says, she wrote, on this journey with God for the last 16 days, I have been more intentional sitting with God. The devotional allowed me to see how much I depend on God. Prioritizing God without rushing gave me a greater seek. The devotional allowed me to seek to see the nature and characteristics of God as a faithful protecting God. This was like a revival and refresher uh, understanding of the importance of spending uninterrupted and intentional time with God. What a beautiful review. Tasha, thank you so much again for your review. I have a few more reviews on there on the website. So if you want to read a few more reviews that I have from some more sisters that got to preview this devotional and did me the favor and they got their copy. <laughs> I put that on my community. I had some volunteers real quick. And they got to preview it before I launched it and they got to tell me some reviews. So I appreciate you all sisters so much for those reviews. And also speaking of reviews, if you haven't left a review on this podcast, hello, sister, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and go to Apple Podcasts or borrow an iPhone from a friend or family member if you don't have an iPhone. And go ahead and just click on that five-star rating if you feel like deserved it. Truly will appreciate it. And if you have an extra 30 more seconds, actually that click just takes like five seconds. An extra 30 seconds will just write a quick, Hey, love the show, whatever you got from it. I don't, I don't know. (laughs) There's a ton of reviews in there with different feedback, but I love it. And I read every single one and it warms my heart when I see how much this podcast is impacting you, my sister. So please keep bringing in those reviews. It also helps the podcast be found by other sisters. And also the other thing you can do to just show thanks and gratitude is just by sharing the show. Again, you want to spread the love, don't you? I mean, we're in the month of February. We're coming in on the month of February this week. 
Let's spread the love. Share a favorite episode with a friend so they can be inspired and encouraged just like you. All right, my sister, I really pray that this encouraged you. I really just wanted to have a conversation here with you and and just talk about this because so many times we we can listen to the enemy's lies and we can listen to that guilty or have a guilty conscience for no reason for just whatever. Maybe we have a perfectionist, perfectionist mindset or 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 maybe our childhood right we we have been so influenced by either how we're raised or how others have treated us and et cetera, et cetera. You, you fill in the blank. And so we need to be careful to listen to the truth, which is found only in God's word and not the enemy's lies. Obviously we have the Holy Spirit. We have other people speaking truth to us through the spirit as well. But the number one way is the word of God. All right, my sister, know that I love you, know that I'm praying for you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.